Good morning. So, uh, we will discuss uh, or we continue our discussion on uh, non ideal reactor models and uh, we are looking at uh, a multi parameter model or a two parameter model. Okay. So, in the last lecture we just started our discussion on this. Of course, uh, like depending on geometry you will have different kind of models, it is not a, uh, it is not like, like you will have just one equation which will have two parameters and that is applicable to any uh, reactor system. So, I will just give you one example right now and then we will see how it uh, varies from reactor to reactor and we will have the two parameter model applicable to different reactor systems, but then the equations would change accordingly. So, what we are looking at is the formulation for a two parameter model. Okay. Fine. So, we are looking at a normal CSTR and uh, now we are looking at a geometry of the CSTR. So, it is like this and you have a nozzle here and you have a nozzle here okay. and there is a stirrer and you have feed coming in and there is the overflow that is happening and then there is a product that is coming out. Okay. Now, uh, you will have nice mixing inside because of intense agitation, right? but there is a possibility that you will have certain pockets in the reactor which are away from the stirrer or impeller and they may act like stagnant pockets or dead zones or relatively dead zones, relatively dead. And there is another possibility that you will have feed coming in and part of it will go and mix here or get in inside a core, but then there is a possibility that part of it will bypass and go along with the outgoing stream. So, apart from dead zones, you will have another non ideality coming in picture which is called as bypass. Okay. So, there are three possibilities that you have a bypass, then you have dead zones and of course, you will have uh, the main core or well mixed zone. Right? And all I know is this that well mixed zone is something similar to a CSTR, whereas these two things I do not know how to incorporate them so far at least, how to incorporate them in the actual reactor model. But then if I know that there is something called as bypass, there is a possibility of bypass, there is a possibility of dead zones. In that case, I, I should incorporate them and one parameter for this and one parameter for this and you will have two parameters okay, as simple as that. So, it becomes a two parameter model. And this is applicable to a, a stirred reactor that I am talking about. If you have some other system, there also you may have multi parameters, okay. not necessarily two. But bypass and dead zones are normally observed in many reactors, many real reactors, and there is always some one parameter associated with one of these effects. Okay. So, in general, a reactor that or reactor model that considers bypass and dead zones can be considered as a two react sorry two parameter model for a mixed reactor okay for a mixed reactor or back mixed reactor or a stirred reactor okay i am not calling it a cstr now because cstr is ideal reactor that we always say this is a stirred reactor stirred tank okay in which you may see bypass and uh, dead pockets i am going to look at some other situations as well where you will come across two react two parameter model or multi parameter models. Okay. This is one example. Now, we will try and elaborate this further, okay. try and give a mathematical treatment to it and, and try and predict the conversion if possible. Now, first of all, how do we know that there is a possibility of bypass? How do we know that there is a possibility of uh, dead zone? Who will tell you? Again the tracer experiment. Okay. See that is the importance of tracer experiment is such a useful technique okay, that tells you the health of the reactor. Okay. Health in the sense, what kind of flow patterns are there inside, what is happening inside a stomach. Okay. All right. Fine. So, I may treat this particular reactor, this is my real reactor.
equivalent to something like this. See bypass means it is not spending time in the reactor at all. Okay, so, it is just going out oh sorry it is going out. So, sorry. So, bypass is directly going out that means not spending time in the reactor whereas, some part is remaining here dead zones which is not seeing turbulence at all. So, so I can look at this particular reactor as a set or network okay, like this. So, there is an inlet that is coming in part of it is going to a CSTR oh sorry. SESTR, okay. part of it is bypassing and how do I represent the dead zone? There is a dead zone here. So, some volume is dead, nothing is going inside, nothing is coming out of it, it is dead. So, from outside I will look at a big reactor, but part of it is dead means the actual active volume is much less or relatively less. Okay. So, V d is something that I need to subtract from the total volume. So, V d plus this I may call this as V s. So, V s plus V d is V. So, V is equal to V s plus V d. Right? Now, this is my inlet concentration is C a 0. I am giving now a mathematical treatment to this particular system flow rate V 0, part of it is going here V s and part is going here bypass V b. I am just calling it as V b. Now, what is coming out or what is there inside is C a s. Right? This is C a 0, same C a 0, nothing happening whereas, because the reaction something is happening here C a s is different from C a 0. Right? V d I do not have to worry much about it, only volume wise I have problem there. Okay. So, V 0 here the total volumetric flow rate I am assuming it to be constant say liquid phase reaction which is nothing but V B plus V S right? and this is C A the resultant concentration. So, ultimately I am going to look at C A. So, this is nothing but C A here, okay. this is C A. Right, and this is CA zero. Okay, so CA zero coming out is CA. Here again, coming out is CA. This is CA zero. What happens inside is I have just formulated a network. Okay, so this is how I'm going to look at this particular reactor. Okay, this reactor for me is this as far as the modeling is concerned. Okay, now it becomes very easy for me to write down the equations for this because every part of this particular network I am well aware of how to write equation for it, how to give mathematical treatment to it. Okay. So, let us do that. Let me draw it again because I will I will always need to refer it again and again while writing equations. Sorry, so we will spend some time in this. C A C A 0, V B, V S, C A S, C A 0, V 0 is equal to V B plus V S. All right. Now, so coming in, in is equal to out. So, let me write whatever is coming in okay. and I may take a balance at this particular point, at this point. Okay. At this point, whatever coming in is uh, C A 0 into V B, V B into C A 0 plus C A S into V S is equal to C A into V B plus V S or nothing but V 0. Right? Okay. So, let us go ahead C A is equal to that means C A is equal to V B C A 0 V B C A 0 plus C A S V S divided by 
v0 okay that is outlet concentration i am interested in outlet concentration so in this i know the inlet concentration okay i know the flow rate what i don't know is what is vb or what is vs once i know vb i can get vs because vs is nothing but v0 minus vb i don't know what is cas right these two are known and these three three are to be found out once i get these I can get a value of C A and that is nothing but my conversion as simple as that. So, fine let us go ahead let us assume now let me retain the same figure and then keep writing equations. Okay. So, same figure okay. now uh, that balance this this one C A Okay, I will write expression for this. Now, before, so let me as let me say that alpha is equal to V s by V 0. Okay. What is V s? V s is the volume of this reactor and what is V is a total volume that is alpha. Okay. It is a fraction of volume which is active sorry fraction fraction of the total volume that is active that is nothing but alpha okay right then let me assume beta is equal to vb by v0 vb by v0 so your total flow rate v0 so out of which vb goes as bypass so this is bypass ratio bypass ratio beta okay beta vb by v0 in that case, my this expression, look at this expression C A, okay. let me write it here. Okay. C A is equal to beta into C A 0 plus 1 minus beta into C A S. look at this expression i am using beta there i just divide numerator and denominator by vb and it's all is okay fine or uh, no need to do that see vb by v0 is equal to beta and vs is nothing but 1 minus beta okay so i have expressed ca in terms of ca0 and cas in terms of and again with the parameter beta now what about cas now, where does so how how will you get a value of beta and all we will see later. Okay. By the way, like can you guess where will it come from? It will come from a tracer experiments. How much bypass has occurred? Tracer experiment will tell me. Okay. Right. So, beta value is to be determined through tracer experiments independently. All right. Now, in this expression, if beta is known what remains is only C A S. Right? Now, how do I calculate C A S? C A S is your simple reactor here you see it is a reactor and C A S is the outlet concentration of this reactor and this reactor is well known to me no dead volume, no bypassing it is the area which is fully active as far as mixing is concerned is well mixed stirred tank reactor nothing but a CSTR. So, outlet concentration of this CSTR can be very well found out by writing a material balance here. Okay. So, this, so, CAS I just write a balance for this I write a balance for this CAS to be found out. Okay. So, V S into C A 0 inlet plus sorry minus V s into C A s outlet minus reacted K C A s into V s is equal to 0 is a normal C S T R balance. Okay. It is a C S T R balance. So, 
C A S now can be written in terms of alpha and beta. Okay. So, this expression, this equation and this equation, okay, I do not need this equation for this. So, let me say so C A S is equal to C A 0 into 1 minus beta into V 0 okay, divided by 1 minus beta into V 0 plus plus alpha into V into small k. By the way, why alpha is there? Because I am multiplying it by capital V, which is the total volume. Because from outside, I am just going to look at a total volume. I do not know how much is the active volume. Okay? So, total volume into alpha, total volume into alpha. So, V s, for V s I have substituted and got alpha into V. So, this expression you can derive it. Okay. So, from this I get this, it is very simple because you know the expression for V s, V s is 1 minus beta into V 0, 1 minus beta into V 0, 1 minus beta into V 0. So, this V s is going to come out as 1 minus beta into V 0. So, you can derive it on your own. Okay. So, this is the expression that I have got for C A S and that is what I want in this equation. right? So, substituting for C A S here from here okay, from here I substitute for C A S here what is this? This is outlet concentration overall outlet concentration overall concentration that I get at outlet as a net effect of these two streams bypass and this. So, I have incorporated bypass, I have incorporated bypass, I have incorporated dead volume as well through alpha. Okay. Fine. Now, I get the expression by substituting for C A S. If I do that, then C A by C A 0 is equal to 1 minus x, you know that no? C A by C A 0. See, I, I, I had expression for C A, now I am just dividing by C A 0, that is nothing but 1 minus x. I want conversion ultimately. Okay. And if I substitute for C A S, I will get the expression, you can derive it on your own. See, what is more important is a methodology and not a final expression that you get. Of course, you need to get a right expression, but then methodology is important more important rather. Okay. What do I see on the right hand side? Beta and alpha. These are the two parameters. These are the two parameters. This takes care of the lead volume, this takes care of bypass. K is rate constant. First order reaction I have considered here. Okay. And tau is a residence time based on the total volume. Do not forget that. N nothing to do with V s. Okay. The total volume that I, I know of in the sense I, jo I just go and do measurements in the in the actual reactor. I measure the diameter, I measure the length and from that I calculate a volume blindly. Okay? I, I do not see what is the active volume and all that. I just see fine this is a liquid level height okay? and this is a diameter pi d square by 4 into L. Okay? So, this is what I am going to calculate. So, that is so, tau will be based on that volume, volume divided by volumetric flow rate. Okay. So, this is the expression for conversion, it is a two parameter model. Now, the question is how do I get this, these two? That is the only question. Once I know how to get these values, I have a two parameter model for a CSTR, not, not CS, for a stirred tank, which is behaving in a non-ideal way with bypass and dead volume, I can predict the conversion for the given volume, given flow rate. right? So, so next question is how to get alpha and beta. Of course, the answer is tracer experiments, E curve or C by C T, C T versus time curve. Okay. So, for the same system, can I write unsteady state balance? Look at this. 
this particular react, reactor system. I will say network. Okay. Can I write unsteady state balance for this? That is simple because this is there is no hold of here. There is no hold of here. So, I can write it is and there is no interaction with this part of the reactor. So, I have to write an unsteady state balance for this part only. Right. So, what is that unsteady state balance? Let us write that unsteady state balance for the CSTR for the CSTR for the CSTR. It is V s C T 0 now this tracer experiment C T 0 minus V s C T s coming out of CSTR is equal to can I write reaction though I am calling this CSTR there is no reaction ok this third tank tracer experiment. So, D n T s divided by D t ok D by D t of n T s accumulation term which is nothing but V s into D C T s by D t unsteady state balance for tracer no reaction no reaction. Okay. And what are the conditions for the positive step input at time less than 0 C t is equal to 0 and at time greater than 0 or equal to 0 C t is equal to C t 0 C t is equal to C t 0. Okay. Stressor equation I know the conditions for the positive step inputs are this. Now, what I need to do because see again what I am going to see at exit edge sorry at exit concentration is this. Okay. So, I need to combine these two now this and this. So, I need to take balance at this particular point. Now, what is that balance we already seen that all right. So, balance at this point for the tracer is C t is equal to V b into C t 0 plus C t s into V s divided by V 0 sorry at this point. Okay. I hope it is clear I am just writing balance for the C t coming out here C t is here okay. and it is a combination of these two. So, they have two terms here. And we know V s is equal to alpha into V, V b is equal to beta into V 0 and tau is equal to total volume divided by V 0. Right? Now, just a matter of integrating this equation, integrating this equation and substituting other for substituting for V b and uh, V s. So, what we get is the final expression in terms of alpha, beta and tau that is residence time. So, the final expression after doing all this is C t s divided by C t 0 is equal to 1 minus exponential minus 1 minus beta alpha t by tau. So, this is the expression for the tracer experiment or tracer concentration at exit C T s oh sorry not at exit oh sorry sorry this is this is at at the outlet of C S T R at the outlet of C S T R here sorry here because I have the equation for C T s the unsteady state balance has been written for C T s. So, if I solve this I get an expression for C T s, but that is not enough because what I am going to see through my tracer experiment is the concentration see sorry here this is my C T I am going to see this concentration. So, this has no mean I am not going to measure this I am going to measure this right and for that I have the expression I have the expression for C t what is that expression we already seen this C t right 
this expression. So, now I know the relationship between C T s and C T. I have already determined C T s this. So, I, I need to just get C T. So, just substitute this here and get C T that is it. So, if I do that I get an expression for C T which is nothing but C T divided by C T 0 is equal to 1 minus 1 minus beta exponential minus 1 beta divided by alpha T by tau yes. Okay. So, this is the outlet concentration, this is the inlet concentration for the tracer beta, alpha and tau with respect to time. So, I have got a relationship how C t changes with respect to time if I have these parameters out of which tau is known because the total volume and volumetric flow rate are known to me. All right. So, in this expression if I know beta and alpha I get C t or other way around if I know C t as function of time I get the values of beta and alpha. Okay. I get a values of beta and alpha. So, I can probably for calculation purpose I need to I will just rearrange this equation and we will put it in this particular form C t 0 C t 0 minus C t is equal to ln 1 by 1 minus beta plus 1 minus beta divided by alpha into t by tau the same as this. You can you can spend some time doing this, okay? But why I have done this? Because now I have a linear plot of what time versus c t zero divided by c t zero minus c t. So of course, if I if I do log log, okay? So if I if I plot ln c t zero minus sorry. C t 0 divided by C t 0 minus C t ln versus time. What I am going to see is a straight line you see is, is time y is equal to m x plus c y is equal to this m x plus c right. So, I am going to see a straight line for which the slope is what is the slope? Slope is 1 minus beta divided by alpha into tau and you know the intercept. It is ln 1, min 1 minus beta. Right? So, if I do experiments in laboratory and plot this versus this, I get a straight line, the slope gives me this and the intercept gives me this. So, with these two expressions, I can determine beta and alpha. Right? So, if I determine beta and alpha, my job is over because I know the conversion in terms of beta and alpha and tau because I already derived an equation for the conversion. Okay, before what is that equation? This is the equation, right? Beta, alpha, and tau. K, of course, is to be known. And now I have told you the procedure to get alpha and beta, right? Through experiments, through tracer experiments. So, once I know the values of alpha and beta, I can get a value of conversion. Two parameter model stirred tank with bypass and pockets. I have incorporated both these effects through two different parameters called alpha and beta. This is one example. Okay. You may come across some other non-ideal reactor or a real reactor where something else is happening. Okay. Right. So, what is that? So, let us consider another example just to appreciate that it is not that difficult to consider the effect of flow patterns on non ideality. Okay. What is more important, what is different here? We have used the same reaction engineering principles that we have learned earlier. Only difference is 
the tracer experiment is able to give me the idea about a flow pattern so that I can formulate a reactor, a reactor model, non ideal reactor model with different parameters in it, right. And this model is able to give me the right conversion, okay. Fine. Now, there is another example where you are talking about a, a reactor, okay, a reactor where you have a nozzle and there is a stirrer, it is a long reactor, relatively long reactor and there is a pipe that is coming in, sorry that is this is a, that, that is for the feed. Okay. See what happens you know, so the kind of flow pattern I do not know like it all depends on the kind of impeller that I am using. So, it is quite possible that you have in the upper part you have some circulation happening, in the lower part also you have some circulation happening. Sorry. Now, what is the difference in this reactor and normal reactor? The difference is that you can see that there is no flow path or rather there are very few flow paths which are taking streams from here to here. Okay. There is always some exchange between these two, but you can see that there are distinct zones formed. So, it is like upper part where there is a mixing happening, lower part also there is some mixing happening, there will be some exchange there will be some exchange, this is not stagnant, okay. this is not stagnant, there will be some exchange, okay. but then this concentration may not be same as this concentration, because of the extent of mixing that is happening and the exchange that is happening between these two. The exchange is such that the concentration is not same, the concentration is not same in these two regions. So, can we treat this as a normal CSTR or ideal CSTR? We cannot because ideal CSTR means that the concentration is uniform everywhere, constant everywhere. right? So, how can I formulate a model for this particular reactor? Now, first of all whether, whether this happens or not, who will tell me again a tracer experiment. So, sometimes the tracer experiments tell you about a flow patterns. So, the, see now if you are expert in this field, then the moment you see the tracer experiment uh, results C t versus t or E t curve, you know what, what is happening inside a reactor. Okay. So, it is like doctor examining a patient, based on the symptoms he would know what exactly is happening. Similarly, based on this tracer experiment, you know what is happening inside. So, try understand importance of tracer experiments, okay, E curve, right, fine. So, so this can be looked upon as two CSTRs exchanging matter okay, and a feed is going to this CSTR and the product is coming out from here. As simple as that, you see there is a CSTR here feed is going in product coming out and this is exchanging mass with the upper CSTR. If this nozzle was here, I would have put the outlet here as simple as that. This is this is the network now, this is the network. Now, what are the parameters for this network? This is V 0, this is V 1 and V 1 and this has to be V 1, otherwise there will be accumulation. So, whatever going in would come out, whatever going in would come out and of course, this has to be V 0. This would be C A 1 and this would be C A 2, can't, they cannot be same, if they are same then there is no point in making two different zones. Why there are two different zones? Because the concentrations are different. right? So, this is my network model. Now, you can identify the parameters. What are the parameters? First parameter will be V 1 divided by V 0, this is one ratio and the other parameter would be the volume of one of these CSTRs divided by the total volume. So, V 1 divided by capital V, this is another parameter. So, this can be beta, this can be alpha. 
the meaning of alpha and beta are different here right? they are not same as what we there it was that there it was bypass ratio okay but in order so i can use some other symbol okay it's not an issue but then it's very clear no like say v1 by v0 this flow rate is one parameter and this is another parameter what am i going to do now i am going to write equation for both of them right both this cstr combine them solve them together now it's 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 like exchange okay so i have to solve these equations simultaneously see i have to solve these equations simultaneously so mathematical ex mathematical exercise will become slightly difficult because your model is a relatively complex model okay but not nothing to worry much about it okay so so solving the model system okay what you see is like see v1 is equal to beta into v0 capital v1 is alpha into v capital which we, which means v2 is equal to capital v2 is equal to 1 minus alpha into v tau is equal to v by small v0 this is capital v huh? this is a total volume total volume so if you can derive equation write the equations of both the cstr solve them together what i would get is ca 1 is equal to what is ca 1 look at this ca 1 and that is what i want that is coming out here okay it will have impact of what is happening here as well for this reactor see is going in and coming out going in and coming out okay from this reactor so this is in the what is coming out from this reactor is inlet for this so this has two inlets here okay so this will be determined not only by this but by this as well okay fine so ca1 is equal to ca0 divided by 1 plus beta plus alpha tau k first order reaction beta square divided by beta plus 1 minus alpha tau k this is what it is i am not writing equations solving them in front of you but then you can very well appreciate i just write those equations for both cstrs and then solve them simultaneously i get this expression and this is nothing but of course this is nothing but ca0 into 1 minus x sorry 1 minus x x is conversion right so see the similarity between this problem and the earlier problem though the geometry was different methodology is quite similar i am just formulating a model coming up with parameters getting an expression for the exit concentration which is related to conversion and so how i am i know conversion how it depends on the parameters alpha beta right tau of course it has to depend on tau residence time and the rate constant and inlet concentration okay of course this will get cancelled ca0 ca0 for the first order reaction all right now again the same procedure how to get alpha and beta how to get alpha and beta same question and same answer pressure experiment i have a system where i have a cstr which is exchanging mass with another cstr it's not a dead volume do not forget it, there is exchange happening. Earlier dead volume there was only one line that I had drawn. Now there is an arrow which is going here and there is an arrow going here, right. If I write unsteady state balance for this non reactive conditions because it is a tracer that is going in, okay. The tracer that is that I that is going in. So if I write unsteady state balance for both the reactors and convert it to beta alpha tau and k i get expression like this tau alpha you can you can derive it on your own right, right now i am just writing it directly to show you or explain or rather demonstrate how similar the entire exercise is 
compared to the earlier one. So, this is for this reactor 1. For 2, there will be another equation tau 1 minus alpha, look at this 1 minus alpha dc2 by dt is equal to beta ct1 minus beta ct2. Every term tells you something. Okay. So, you can imagine very well imagine how this equation has come. Okay. There is nothing great about it. Okay. This is coming in going out yeah, accumulation similar thing happening here. So, but then now what is happening here is like you have two equations they are coupled they are coupled because C T 2 is appearing here and C T 1 is appearing here. So, I cannot independently solve them. So, I have to solve them together. I have to solve them together. This is a set of ODEs to be solved together. You can use numerical technique or one can do it analytically also right? and get a values of alpha and beta. Okay. Now, the in earlier case it was quite easy for us to get a values of alpha and beta because it was a linear plot. Okay, we plotted some ln c t 0 divided by c t minus something versus time and then that plot slope and intercept gave us some values of alpha and beta. Here it is going to be a bit difficult because I have ODEs. I, I can even get some equation after solving this. Okay. After solving this I may get some equation and uh, that equation analytical expression for C T 1 because C T 1 is something that is coming out okay, and I need to compare. So, this plot of C T 1 versus time right, I may see something like this. Okay, I'm just giving you some picture. Okay, uh, just guess something. Okay, so that CSTR, so it's going to go like this. I'll get value at zero also, very close to uh, t is equal to zero, right? So I'm going to get something like this. Let's assume that. Now this is my experiment, and by solving these equations, by solving these equations, I will get some behavior. Now, these equations, if I want to solve these equations, I need to have values of beta and alpha. Okay. So, the procedure may be you assume some value of alpha and beta, you may get a behavior like this, which is much different from this. So, there is some error, there is some error, right. And this error we need to minimize. You minimize it in such a way or other assume the values of alpha and beta in such a way that this error is minimized. Right? I think we have seen this before also you have to have use a least square optimization technique. Okay? So, it is a numerical technique it is not so easy to determine the values of alpha and beta in this particular case because I do not get a straightforward linear relationship I cannot rearrange those equations. So, that way this particular problem is slightly complicated compared to the earlier one, but methodology procedure is quite similar. Okay. So, go on changing the values of alpha and beta systematically, there are techniques available such that this error is minimized or least square error is minimized. That means, C T 1 predicted minus C T 1 experimental square divided of course, you can normalize it C T 1 experimental square. If this this is minimized, so this is you have to minimize this for the values of alpha and beta. So, this becomes a optimization problem. So, get a values of alpha and beta in such a way that this is minima minimized, this function is minimized and you can do it using software or other they, they can be a solver, they can be an optimizer, a least square method which uses least square method and you know why square and why, why it is called a least square method and all that. Square is because like I do not want to consider the sign of the error. Okay? Otherwise, two errors may compensate each other and they may give you 
the function to be they may say that function is 0, but that may not be the situation you are much away from the actual real values. Okay. So, that is why square. So, it makes sure that you have the positive values. All right. Determine alpha and beta. So, like this there can be different situations that you may come across. A simple scenario now there are many possibilities. Okay. How do I identify what kind of model I may I should go for from the E curve itself. So, let us let us consider a situation I have a plug a tubular reactor, but not a simple tubular reactor where I just have one inlet there are two inlets so, the reaction of A plus B giving C. Now, C sorry B is coming this way as jets all along the periphery. So, I have I am showing two jets, but there can be multiple jets along the circumference and there is one reactant coming in that is A and all the B is going this way. There is a reason why because I want these these to mix get well mixed here okay, both these reactants as and when they come because if there are some zones where only B remains or only A remains then there is a problem because it may go undergo side reaction. Okay. So, in this zone I want them to mix thoroughly and later on I do not have any problem okay. let them go together or in a plug flow manner once they are mixed well. Now, this is one reactor okay. this is one reactor how do I model this reactor it is very simple is not it if I before that if I just do a tracer experiment on this that means in, in, an, in non reactive conditions suppose I inject a tracer at the inlet what will I see at the outlet? There is a material flowing like this. Huh? I am just injecting tracer. Now, there is no reaction. I am just sending some an inert in this. Flow pattern is similar when the reaction is taking place. What is what, what will I see here? I am injecting a tracer, a pulse. What do I see here? If it was a simple plug flow tubular reactor, I will see a pulse at time tau. Right? But now, because there is some mixing happening, I am going to see something different. So, let us assume that this part of the reactor is well mixed. So, this behaves like a CSTR and then it behaves like this particular part behaves like a plug flow reactor. So, what I am going to see is initially at this point suppose I take measurements, I will see a CSTR type behavior. Right? So, this is a CSTR. So, this is a CSTR this is a CSTR and here it is PFR. So, after this it is going to behave like a PFR. So, this uh, this particular response is going to come out at this point exactly at as after the time interval equivalent to the residence time spent here. Okay. So, the behavior is going to be like this. Okay. So, if I see an E curve or C curve whatever like this, then I may say that it is a combination of PFR and CSTR in series. Of course, you have to remember one thing whether it is first the PFR or CSTR because in both the cases you are going to get a same E curve. Then you will have to think about what, what is the real situation. Now, I know that I am sending jets here. So, definitely first part is CSTR. So, without knowing this just based on this I cannot make a reactor model. There are many possibilities of combination of these reactors that can give rise to the same E curve. So, one E curve is likely to give you different reactor models, but knowing more about the real reactor you can shortlist them and come up with a final model. So, for this particular case my network is this a simple network is this a CSTR followed by PFR. Once I know this, I can definitely find out the conversion. What is the parameter for this model? There is only one parameter here. I know the total volume. How much of the total volume is covered by or other is taken up by the CSTR and how much of it is PFR? Okay. That is the only parameter now. It is a one parameter model. Okay. But if, if for some reason I see some dead zone here that means, area under the curve for E curve is not 1 right 
traces still comes out okay like it keep coming out okay long time and area under curve calculated based on the total volume is not matching one that means there is some dead volume so okay fine so that means there is some dead volume sorry i can say that there is a dead volume here not here sorry this is a real reactor so this is a dead volume here that's how i look at it so then the dead volume becomes another parameter alpha something that we used before so, that is why that is how we look at different types of reactors and at the same time from the E curve or C curve, I can very well get some idea about what kind of flow patterns you may have inside a reactor otherwise. Okay. So, there are many possibilities just one of them you have a tubular reactor okay, and some streams are lagging behind some streams are going ahead. Okay. From so it gets so it get, gets divided for some reasons this is going very fast and this is going slow what is the model for this the model is that you have a feed that gets divided in two pfrs right this is again one parameter model how much goes here how much goes here oh sorry this is a two parameter model how much goes here how much goes here and the volumes of this pf so, again is a two parameter model. There is a possibility that you have something like this, there is a mixing happening here and this is going straight. So, you this is equivalent to sorry, this is equivalent to PFR and CSTR in parallel, right. Again, two parameters how much goes here and what is the ratio here, the volumes, right? No? So, many such scenarios you can have even more complicated that you may have some 3 4 CSTRs in series, then there is one parallel PFR. So, many things happening depending on what kind of situation you are in. Okay? Normally, for a chemical plant, our reactors are well shaped reactors, but if you are talking about some natural reactors reaction taking place in space or reaction taking place underground in that case geometry is not in your hand okay then that case you have to make assumptions or rather it can be a more complicated or a complex network of different ideal reactors okay and bypass dead volume and so on what is the key is a tracer experiment the e curve the c curve okay tracer experiment you, you should learn to read the tracer experiment results properly. Okay. If that happens, then your job is easy. Okay. Of course, mathematical treatment is something that you can definitely do, but then solving the equations numerically and all you may need to take help of software and all, but the methodology is very clear. Okay. So, it is a tracer experiment that gives you an idea about a reactor behavior as far as the flow patterns is concerned. Okay. So, this is all about how we use multi parameter models for real reactors. Okay. I have shown you two parameter model here, but you can very well imagine scenarios where you can have now the same case here. Okay. Like for example, in this case like you have two streams giving, but you may have another rather uh, some part of the reactor where you will have uh, an intermediate velocity. So, you will have third PFR in series. Okay. So, and then the parameters would increase right. So, as simple as that how number of parameters will grow okay. that that will depend on the complexity right. So, so first thing is you need to come up with the proper reactor or multi zonal model or network. How do you do that? The two things that are required for this first is your E curve tracer experiment and the knowledge of the system. As I said only E curve can give rise to multiple networks giving the same E curve. right? Out of those multiple networks whether it is first CSTR and then PFR or first PFR or then CSTR that I would know based on some knowledge of the system of the reactor that I am going to use. These two will tell me or these two will help me formulate a network. Once you have a network, 
write down balance equations, get the expression for the conversion and from in that expression you will have the parameters for the network and those parameters are to be determined through tracer experiments. So, I will just write down quickly what it is. Okay. Formulate a model, formulate a model, this is going typically going to be a network which will have CSTR, PFR, bypass, dead volume. We have not seen many other cases, a recycle, exchange, many features possible. Who will, this is based on what? This is based on, based on E curve or tracer experiment and knowledge of of the reactor system. Why do I say system? Because not just reactor geometry, but where is the inlet nozzle, where is the outlet nozzle, all these things will matter. Once you have, once you formulate a model network, right balance equation and get x conversion. You may get expression for this or you have to solve these equations numerically. In terms of model parameters, for example, alpha, beta and so on, right. Now, third step would be get parameters from the tracer experiments and then evaluate x. Now, this step may need use of optimization solvers say least square or whatever. So, this is overall procedure, okay. this is overall procedure. I hope this is clear like how to you how to incorporate or how to consider non ideality in real reactors and uh, uh, predict the right conversion okay, with the help of E curves. Thank you very much. Thanks.